Hello friends, this is Dr. Francis Miles, your host for the Order of Melchizedek television show. As you can see, this studio looks different from the main station we have in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm in Orlando at one of our smaller studios and I'm here uh, because this is going to be the week we have a powerful conference called Purified Conference at the church of a dear friend of mine, uh, Apostle Brand Valley. And uh, it's gonna be my it's gonna be myself speaking, uh, Pastor Suzanne Hin, uh, my dear friend Katie Souser, my dear friend Dr. Judy Jacobs, a singer extraordinaire and a preacher of the gospel, like nobody's business, and my dear dear friend Tony Kemp. So we are here in Orlando, and so I'm shooting from here uh, and, and coming to you. So I'm excited that you have joined us again for another life changing episode on the Order of Melchizedek. I don't, know, I don't know of any TV program right now uh, uh, that is fully dedicated uh, uh, to teaching the body of Christ how to function in the priesthood of Melchizedek. Because the Bible t clearly tells us that Jesus has become to us a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So we are going to look at the facet of that priesthood of Melchizedek today on the show. And I tell you, your life is not going to be the same. Now listen. Before I go into my teaching today, and I have a powerful teaching today about the order of Melchizedek from the life of King David, but I want to just encourage you, invite you, inspire you to join us in October. Uh, we are going to be having a very powerful conference, King's Conference, which is our main flagship conference of the year. Uh, King stands for Kingdom Invasion Gathering of the Saints. And right in my hands is a flyer about it. Yeah, we've got Pastor Ben Hien. Uh, he's going to be with us. And we are going to be celebrating 45 years of the healing ministry of Pastor Benny. So it's going to be an amazing time. So for all of you that have been following Pastor Benny Hien, or maybe you have been healed by his ministry, or you came to faith because of his, his ministry, please find your way to Atlanta, Georgia. I don't care if you're in Nigeria, you are in Zambia, you are in South Africa. Get on a plane. Believe God that this, if this is going to be the trip you take to come to America in October 28th to the 31st. And then we've got my dear man of God and friend that I respect very highly, a father Father to the nations, Bishop Tudor Bismarck from Zimbabwe, you know, a presiding bishop of uh, Jabula Network of Churches and also the African Council of Apostles. Uh, glory to God. And then we got Dr. Wellington Boone. Oh, my God. And then we got Dr. Alveda King, uh, the niece of the late Martin Luther King. It's going to be an amazing time of the God Encounter in Atlanta. And then we've got Kerry Souza. My God, you know, what a powerful woman of God. Miracles, signs and wonders. They follow this girl, whatever she goes. Then we've got powerful speakers. Then we've got Ron, I mean, we've got Ron Kenali. Ron Kenali, you know, uh, coming to be with us. And uh, Eddie James and his entire band are coming there to, uh, to lead us in worship. And then Prince, a, young, a powerful upcoming uh, a global musician uh, coming out of Zambia is going to be with us. And of course, Pastor Chris Dego. It's going to be an amazing time of the God Encounter. I'm sure you can see all that information on the screen. And I'm sure that you are going to begin to pray to be with us in October 2021. Please simply go to francismouse.com. francismouse.com and uh, come and be with us in October. Praise God. Now listen. I'm excited. Our, our, our TV broadcast is called The Order of Melchizedek. Television show, but deliberately because this is the essence and, uh, of what the show is about. And it's the mandate of God upon my life. It's really the mandate of God upon my life is to teach the body of Christ on the order of Melchizedek. I wrote a book called The Order of Melchizedek that's available on Amazon. It's available on uh, uh, Apple iBooks. And I hope you get yourself a copy of The Order of Melchizedek. And my other Arsenal books, I may talk about one or, one or two in this broadcast. 
But right now, I want to get into this word about the order of Melchizedek that I want to be able to bring you into. Because I believe that this is going to be an answer to prayer to somebody who's praying for the breakthrough, who's praying for your life to go through a major shift and transformation. So I'm going to open up in, your, in, your, in the Bible, and I'm using the Amplified. I love the Amplified because I just like to amplify certain aspects of the Bible because the English language is very limited compared to the Hebrew. But the Amplified is pretty close in some, in some of the words that they add to amplify the text. Psalm 110, in Psalm 110, the Bible says, The Lord God says unto my Lord, The Lord says unto my Lord, The Messiah, sit at my right hand until I make your adversaries your footstool. The Lord will send forth from Zion the scepter of your strength. Rule then in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer, who offer themselves willingly in the day of your power. I would believe one of the reasons we are struggling in the church to get people to do anything is because we are not walking in the power of God. And I'm going to show you that symbiotic connection between the supernatural glory power of God and, and the church walking in the order of Melchizedek. This priesthood of Jesus. You know, there's something about walking in it that elicits such power that people that were, uh, were previously unwilling become willing in the day of his power. But it says this as we continue. It says in the beauty of holiness in 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 the in holy array out of the womb of the morning you spring forth your young men who are as dew. The Lord has sown, the Lord has sown. He has made a vow and will not revoke or change it. You are a priest Forever after the manner and order of Melchizedek. You are a priest after the manner and order of Melchizedek. What I want you to understand is David here is reporting like a reporter. He's reporting in the third person. You know, he's saying, the Lord said to my Lord, the Lord said to my Lord. So definitely, so David is really the third person in this wheel because he's observing two lords that are talking to each other. What is interesting that they were both lords to David, Adonai. The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. We know from, from, from scripture, because we have the luxury that the Bible is complete now, the new covenant is attached to the, to the Tanakh, that's the old covenant part of it. Uh, so we can understand now that the one who is seated on the right hand of God is Jesus. But when David wrote this, they didn't have the New Covenant. They didn't have the New Testament scriptures. You know, so, so at the time of David, this was a true it was a prophecy. They didn't know who's this Lord David was talking about. But now we can put a face to him. We can put a face, a face and name to him. This is Jesus. He's the only one who died and rose from the dead and is now on the right hand of God in the heavenly realms. So it's very clear that this prophecy of Psalm 110 is about Jesus, Yeshua. So the Lord said unto my Lord, is the heavenly father speaking to the son, God the son. So David is ruptured in the realm of the spirit. And by revelation, he, he finds out that there is, a, there is a higher realm of priesthood. There is a higher order of the priesthood than what was available in Israel at the time of David, which was the Levitical priesthood of Aaron, the Aaronic priesthood, were ministering for God in the temple in Israel. And yet by revelation, David would, be, would come to understand that there is a higher dimension of priesthood. It's called the order of Melchizedek. And Jesus is, is, the, is the enshrined high priest of this eternal order. And the vow of Jesus being the high priest of the order of Melchizedek begins in, in the realms of eternity. That's why we can change decisions made by God in the eternal realm. Time cannot change what has been completed in eternity. Because time is such a, is such a finite instrument. It cannot control that invisible realm of God. Where God makes the vow to Yeshua and says, You are a priest forever after the order 
of Melchizedek. I'm telling you, saints, there is so much that comes just out of these few scriptures, you know, from the order of Mil- about the order of Melchizedek that I want to touch on. But I just want to emphasize that this was a David being raptured into a heavenly encounter where he finds himself, uh, so to speak, in a board meeting where the Godhead is speaking and God the Father is talking to God the Son that you are the high priest. It's very interesting that, the, that this discussion that, that you are the high priest comes from the Father to the Son. It makes sense, therefore, that if Yeshua is, was, was always our high priest, even in the eternity, uh, the second member of the Godhead, we, which we know the word of God, is the word of God, Yeshua, Jesus, is actually a high priest. Then it makes sense since it was the job of the high priest to atone for the sins of the people. It makes sense that when we, it makes sense that he was the he was the only member of the Godhead that had to put on flesh to die for us as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin because that is the work of the high priest. Even the Levitical order, Aaron would atone for the sins of the children of Abraham. He would atone for the sins of the children of Israel year after year. He would come on Yom Kippur and atone for their sins. But now we find that according to Psalm 110, Yeshua is the, is the original high priest. That means that every high priest of God from Aaron to those that came after him in Israel, they were foreshadowing the actual high priest himself, Yeshua Jesus. So David is very clear. He says, he says the Lord has, has, has made a vow, has made a vow. He has made a promise, an unbreakable promise that you, Yeshua Jesus, are a priest forever after the man and the order of Melchizedek. Wow, forever. Now remember, when David is having this prophetic encounter, he is a 1,500 years removed from the resurrection. Think about this. He is 1,500 years removed from the resurrection, the life and the resurrection of Jesus. That means, therefore, that when he's getting this revelation sense, come on now, Jesus is not even born. That tells us that the Melchizedek priesthood transcends the birth of Jesus. He did not become a man to become a priest. He was already that. And that's why he was the primary, he was the best candidate to come and atone for our sins because the, the, the title of high priest had already been given to the second member of the Godhead, but we come to know now as Yeshua. Listen, I have so much revelation, but I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. I wanted to check this out. healed in her soul he also took care of that accusation in the court when he said i loose you and that means to acquit someone of a crime why does he say be strong and be courageous Mamutale? number one you've got to be strong you've got to be courageous when claiming the things that belong to you if you're up against principalities and powers en contra de principados, and Satan is knocking you around y el enemigo te está dando contra ti, put praise on in your car pon alabanza. put praise on so we must learn to depend on the Holy Spirit to tell us what these things are and what's the next thing and what the church ought to be doing rather than conform to everything that is going on he says you're blessed what he says father? flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father he will preach the gospel with great power and influence I say even to the nations of the earth and I began to prophesy his destiny as I did that the spirit of the Lord said now rebuke the spirit of depression the mystery of your unfulfilled prophecy is found in what I'm saying today if you hear what the spirit is saying because the king is speaking
Hello, saints, I'm telling you, uh, there is powerful revelation that's come from, coming from heaven today on this priesthood of Melchizedek. But right now, I just want to encourage you to get a copy of my book, The Issuing Divine Restraining Orders from the Court of Heaven. This is one of the most powerful prayer books you ever get in your life, I promise you. The book is filled with 18, 18 different types of divine restraining orders that you can come into the court of heaven to acquire for you and your family. Thousands of lives have been changed by the book issuing divine restraining orders from the court of heaven. Now listen, be, before we went on our break, we were talking about some powerful things that, they, that, that were revealed to David. So God is making a vow. When God makes a vow, whatever he's making a vow over must be important in the economy of God. And it must be important to us because God does everything for our benefit. So he says, to, to, he says in verse 4, the Lord has, has, has sown and he will not revoke or change his mind. You are a priest forever after the manner and the order of Melchizedek. So essentially, any church that does not embrace the order of Melchizedek, you are just playing with fire. Because the truth of the matter is God is not going to change his mind. That Yeshua Jesus is a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Which really begs the question then, if Jesus is, is, is Lord, if Jesus is Lord and is the head of the church, the Bible is very clear in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 that he is the head of the church. If he's the head of the church, then how can the head of the church be a priest in the order of Melchizedek and the rest of the body is functioning in the Levitical priestly order? It doesn't make sense. There is disagreement between the head and the body. And that's the problem with the church. That's why we are short-circuiting the power of God because the church, for the most part, is operating in, with a Levitical mindset, with that Old Testament Levitical style of ministry. But the truth of the matter is we have, been, we have transcended the priesthood of Levi in the new covenant, we are that we are members of the household of Melchizedek. We are members of the eternal priesthood of Melchizedek. And I'm hoping that you get this revelation and begin to run with it because I believe it's going to release power into your life to minister as a priest to God Most High like you've never been able to minister before. Glory to God. I will really believe this. How do I know this? Because I have had the privilege of training all now close to 6,000 students whom have graduated in life's schools of ministry, live schools of ministry, since I began to do the school since 2010. In, in about 10 years, God has been gracious. I've been able to graduate close to 6,000 students around the world in four continents you know, who have gone through the Order Melchizedek School of Ministry. I have seen the change the revelation has brought in their life, the radical change, the nearness to God, the supernatural manifestation of God's power upon their life. But, but, but David alludes to it. He says, your people offer themselves willingly in the day of your power. What day of your power are we talking about? It is the day, or is the day when we begin to realize as the body of Christ that Jesus is our Melchizedek. He is our king of righteousness. He is the same high priest who appeared to Abraham in the valley of Shaveh and gave him the communion of bread and wine, just like he did with his, uh, his 12 disciples on the way to the cross. Glory to God. I will believe that many of us, our lives is about to change as we begin to understand this priesthood of Melchizedek. Glory to God. What I love about it is the features of this order. What David tells us are some of the features of the men and women who operate under this eternal order. Praise God. First, the first thing we see is this. These men and women who function under this order of Melchizedek, like Jesus, have this supernatural ability to be here on earth and yet be very connected actively to the heavenly realms. So yes, David is, is, is yet alive, he's on earth, and yet he's connected to what's happening in the Godhead, in the boardroom of the Godhead. 
God of the Godhead. He is picking up supernatural conversations between the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Man, I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but I need that type of lifestyle. That I am on earth, but I'm also in heaven at the exact same time. What a powerful lifestyle. My friend, that lifestyle is available to the priests, to the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek because it's a heavenly priesthood. So when you embrace a heavenly priesthood on earth, you get connected. You get connected to the realm, to the original realm, the original uh, domain of the priesthood of Melchizedek, which is the heavenly realm. So when you are connected to it, when the order of Melchizedek as a priesthood of God becomes alive and active inside of you. Friends, don't be surprised if your entire life changes as you begin to find yourself ruptured in heavenly conversation. It's no wonder the Apostle Paul says, I knew the man 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of it, I do not know. But he was caught up to the throne of God and he had things that are not even lawful for a man to utter here on earth. I'm telling you, friends, there is a lifestyle called the lifestyle of the priest of the order of Melchizedek. We are called like Abraham to function in the priesthood of Melchizedek. One of the other features we find of those that operate in this order of Melchizedek, one of the, the, the features is that God says, I'll make, your, I'll make your adversaries, your enemies, your footstool. Friends, let me tell you something. I, as when I began to embrace the order of Melchizedek in my life, things that used to fight me, devils that give me headaches, are now operating under my feet. I began to come into such a place of dominion. It is, it is not even funny. The level of dominion I'm walking in today, I mean, if you had told me I would be walking in this level of dominion over the demonic powers and the demonic realms that sometimes try to come against my life and ministry in the different nations. I mean, just 20 years ago, I'd have thought you were crazy. But coming into this order of Melchizedek, God literally has placed my enemies under my feet. And I believe God wants to do the same thing for you as you reckon yourself a member of the priestly order of Melchizedek. Why do you have to reckon yourself? Because God will not force you to function in a priesthood you refuse to embrace. This is why God sends revelation to us so we can embrace what has freely been given to us. This is why the Holy Ghost came, to expose to our eyes the things that, are freely belong, that freely belong to us, the things that Christ Jesus died for us to enjoy. One of them, my friend, is the ability for you and I, no matter what race, color of our skin, to be able to function in the eternal priesthood of Melchizedek and begin to feel the, the resurgence of power in our lives like never before, to be connected to this eternal priesthood, to join Abraham, to join Mose, and everybody who has operated in this eternal order or priesthood since Abraham was intercepted by Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14 in the Valley of Kings. I wouldn't believe that this program could be your divine interception. It could be the time when God says, son and daughter, I want to activate the wells of the Melchizedek order, the wells of the Melchizedek order that have been lying dormant in so many believers. And when you do that, you're going to begin to see you come into a place of stature. Your enemies or things you're fighting, mountains that you're dealing with will begin to become hills and then valleys as you ascend into a place of stature. There is a realm of ascendancy, I believe, that comes to people who get opened up the revelation of the order of Melchizedek. And I pray that this is your time of deliverance. I pray that this is your time of engagement when you're going to realize this is what you're born to be, to be connected accurately to the head, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a priest forever, according to Hebrews 5, in the order of Melchizedek. If my high priest is in the, is in the order of Melchizedek, so are we here on earth. The Bible says, as he is in heaven, so are we here on earth. So I, I am a priest after the order of Melchizedek. I am a king and a priest in that order. In that order. And I'm telling you, I'm going to show you in the next broadcast, you know, I'm going to be showing you the symbiotic connection between the spirit of restoration and functioning as a believer in the order of Melchizedek. 
Some of you have been ransacked by devils and whatever the enemy stole from you remains stolen. The devil is a liar because the Bible has clear laws of restoration in the Bible. Why are they not being activated in your life? So what has been stolen can be brought back to you seven times over because the enemy's house has been ransacked by God. But there is, a, there is a technology, there is a pattern of restoration in the Bible that I found that is directly connected to the revelation of the order of Melchizedek. And I know in real time people said to the mouse, as soon as I read your book on the order of Melchizedek, as soon as I heard you teach on the order of Melchizedek, and I began to operate under that priesthood, restoration began to come to me. God began to change my life. Things that, I've, uh, that I lost began to come back to me. Businesses, relationships. So I really believe there is a symbiotic connection between functioning in that order of Melchizedek. Glory to God. And the spirit of restoration. I don't know where you're coming from. But I'm praying to God that God will restore whatever the locusts have eaten in your life. God will restore your health. God will restore your marriage. May God restore the business that could have been destroyed by the COVID pandemic. That, that shook the economies of nations and reset economies. But I can tell you there's an eternal priesthood that transcends both time and space. That means when you are part of that priesthood, you cannot be arrested by the pandemics that come in the cubicle of time. Whatever comes in the cub cubicle of time can be overcome by anything that comes from an invisible realm of eternity that is not governed by time. So when you're connected to a priesthood like, that, like the order of Melchizedek, I'm telling you, you're gonna become a conduit of divine revelations, strategies, that are going to cause you to recover so quickly. That actually the pandemic will become the best thing that ever happened to you. Because your economy is being reset by the Spirit of God. Since I'm telling you, I want you to understand that God has called you and I as believers in the new covenant to function as priests under the order of Melchizedek. Now listen, some of you may have been looking at the, 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 the nice lion picture behind me. That is a powerful picture done by my wife, who's an amazing graphic artist, prophetic artist. My God, our prophetic paintings are legendary. They are all over the world. You can go to her website, camelamiles.com, and uh, get these amazing paintings and put them in your house so they can speak life into your homes or your businesses. Praise God. Listen, for saints, this is Dr. Francis Mouse saying I'm not, out of the, I'm not out of revelation, I'm just out of time. But I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next broadcast where God is going to move again like never before. I love you and thank you for DVRing, DVRing this program and never missing one episode of The Order of Melchizedek with your host, Dr. Francis Mouse. Shalom, shalom. <music>